was um, putting my son to sleep and I was in his room, it was dark, we were in the rocking chair and I um, was just sort of burping him after giving him his bottle and the thought literally popped into my head, what if I smothered him with, with the birth cloth, burp cloth, excuse me. Um, you know, <laughs> I can't, there's nothing I can convey that would describe how that felt. You, you almost just go, okay, you know, whatever, that was random, I'm gonna move on, except they kept happening. Um, what if I drowned him in the bathtub? What if I dropped him down the stairs? And it, it seemed like no matter what I did, I had these horrifying thoughts come into my head and I was just stricken. It wasn't actually long after I started having the intrusive thoughts that I realized this is not, you know, this is bad and um, it's not gonna get any better and I can't take it. I kind of thought, well, it's over, so I might as well go tell somebody and see what they're gonna do about it. I told her about my intrusive thoughts and she said, oh, hmm. And then proceeded to tell me, um, of course, without telling me specifically who these people were about several clients she had that had intrusive thoughts and the, they're called intrusive thoughts and here's what they are and I was like what you know I mean I've never even heard of this how is this possible that this is a thing that happens to people and I don't know about it and I don't know that it's gonna be okay and that you can be treated for this and I, I mean I was like you know blown back in the chair that she wasn't you know shocked from then on I went to therapy. Uh, I chose to take medication and see a psychiatrist as well. And it took many months, um, but I got better. I'm totally better. I sort of feel like my job is I'm a connector. You know, I'm here to tell you, you're gonna be fine. I swear it. I know you don't believe it and nothing I can say will convince you because I was the same way, but you're gonna be fine. And I think once women have that information and they see the faces of people who've been in their same spot and are blissfully happy mothers now as I am, it gives them the courage to sort of take that step and um, start getting help. I was a normal new mom having an experience that um, anywhere from 10 to 25% of all new mothers experience. And I think that's important for people to know. Uh, number one, you're not alone. Number two, this is a completely treatable illness. As horrible as you feel, you do need to take some responsibility for your recovery. And in order to do that, that means that you have to be an advocate for yourself. You know, whatever it is that you've chosen to do, if it's not at some point making an improvement, you, you can't just sort of cede your responsibility to the person in the white coat. When you feel as though you aren't worth anything, it's sort of hard to advocate for yourself, but you just have to do it. Just do the thing that feels foreign and awkward and just do it anyway because in the end that will benefit you more than you know. <music>